All right, here's a little quiz. Which is cleaner, your office or a toilet seat? Actually, it's the toilet seat, believe it or not. Your office has 400 times more germs, which makes you wonder what might be lurking on your keyboard or your stapler. Oh, Dr. Shirini Iyengar, a cardiologist at the Bradenton Cardiology Center and daytime's resident doctor, is here to tell us how to germ proof our office. I'm sorry, I'm slightly disgusted by this you know, right and now. Lindsay, we should all be disgusted by this because this is something we all do on a daily basis. Most of us who work in an office know that there's a lot of things we probably do around the office space, probably shouldn't be doing, including eating. And like I said, washing these areas down is probably not the first thing we think about. And even if it looks clean, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is. Absolutely not. Taking just a piece of paper after you're done eating or whatever you're doing working is not enough because all it does is take the top surface of the dust or shall we say the germs of whatever you've eaten off the desk but it doesn't take what's actually in the wood or in the computer off well how do the germs transfer from your hands you know i mean other than just picking up the phone or or you know grabbing the tape you know tape dispenser how does this all transfer well think about it that if you were working in an office setting going to the water cooler then going to another area you're taking germs from other places bringing them back to your office setting and placing them on these settings here even if you haven't touched something for an hour and a half even if you haven't touched something if you are someone who's actually touched something even hours earlier potentially those germs can be transmitted and you got to remember too a lot of these things germs will sit around for a while if you haven't wiped them down appropriately. Oh, we live in a bacteria-infested society. You know, it's not just bacteria, it's also the time for the flu. Yeah, and cold so, and flu season. Cold and flu season. That's probably the more concerning thing with the viruses. So what we have to tell people is that it's not enough just to take, shall we say, just the, like we said, the white or the like tissue. Like a tissue or is a not napkin? The, it's not the number one thing to do. The first thing you need to do is use an alcohol-based wipe of some sort. Okay, so go pick up some alcohol wipes. Yeah, they're, they're very cheap. inexpensive exactly. at your grocery store or wherever. Absolutely, and wipe your desk down and wipe whatever you're touching down either daily or at least weekly. And it includes the pens and papers that you're utilizing or the, sorry, the tape that you're utilizing, but more importantly, your phone, your computer, and the thing we use most probably, the mouse. So we basically have to dump everything on our desk into a huge bucket of sanitizer. Yeah, well, like, maybe not that as extreme, <laughs> but we should at least take it back a little bit and actually use those alcohol wipes on the most of the things we touch on a daily basis. And the thing is, eating at the desk. That's oh, that's a big culprit too, but you're bringing in a whole different set of germs and bacteria when you eat at your you're desk. You're absolutely right. And the main thing is a lot of people will often eat, not wipe their desk down, and then put some of the food in their desk for later. I don't know who would do that between us. I don't, <laughs> both of us, actually. It, it's We're sad. both culprits of it, and I think as we both discussed this, how many people will actually find food in their keyboard after they're done eating? These are things that you have to recognize that can have mold and germs and viruses can start later on. Okay, so let's talk about the two germiest places. Let's say you're not going to necessarily wipe down everything on your desk every week as you recommend that we do. What are the couple of areas that we should definitely stick to? Number one, the phone. The phone, because not only are you touching it with your hands, you're actually breathing into it. There's droplets, respiratory droplets are getting onto the phone line itself. Right. So really need to wipe down the handle and where you speak into it, as well as the keyboard itself. So I would say the phone is your first and foremost place that you have to wipe down. And you don't know who's been using your phone as well. So you're right. it's key to wipe that down. Okay, so definitely the phone. What else? And the second thing would be the mouse pad, including the keyboard. If you're mostly the mouse pad user and you're occasionally using the keyboard, I would say the mouse has to be wiped down daily, but the keyboard, as well because you're going to be typing and when you do that you're transmitting those germs onto the keyboard and vice versa. And the germs will stay on there for quite a they while. They will absolutely too. they will definitely stay on there especially if you're not wiping them down regularly with any alcohol based swabs. Okay so everything has to be an alcohol based swab. Of some sort. Some alcohol will be the best thing to use because it's cheap it's effective. Okay all right gotcha okay we can handle that. Um, and then also food uh, food in the keyboard shake it out shake that's it not out. enough. It's not enough but yes you do have to shake it out because once you have food in there there's potential for mold and and that's what we're worried about. We don't want anything growing in your keyboard. All right, all right. And this, and, and these germs can last here for a long time. So even if the, the winter cold and flu season is over, if we're not cleaning it in the summer, hey, you can still pick something up. Because you're walking around the office to other areas, you're gonna chances are bringing something back potentially as well. So yes, so you gotta remember these things are just havens for bacteria if they're not properly taken care of. Okay, should we be scared right now? <laughs> is that well, something? I don't think anybody should be necessarily running out, throwing their equipment out, or dumping it into a vat of alcohol. But okay. I do believe though, if there there is a, a pretense for getting sick right now. It could be coming from something as simple as your phone or your keyboards. Okay, well, Dr. Iyengar, thank you very much for being here. We, we do appreciate it. And let everybody, let's just keep everything clean. We'll be right back with more Night Time.